Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from the book of Luke, Luke's gospel, the 19th chapter. Listen now, friends, for the word of the Lord. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God indeed. (laughs) So every time I read this passage, every time I read this passage, I get the same thrill. The thrill of that moment of a man who thought he was hidden in a tree to observe what was going on around him. And the man that he wanted to see the most looked up directly at him and called him by name. What an encounter. What a thrilling, if not perhaps maybe a little terrifying for Zacchaeus' encounter. But what a thrilling encounter nonetheless. And Jesus knew his name. That gets me every time. Now the people in Jericho, they also knew Zacchaeus' name. They had reason to know Zacchaeus well. He had cheated all of them. (laughs) Yes, he was a tax collector. And yes, as, as many of us are probably well aware, to be a tax collector in the Roman system meant that you got your living by collecting taxes for the Romans. So he was a traitor to begin with to the people. But then also you made your living by collecting more than the Romans wanted. And yes, you were by law allowed to do that, but it made you a thief. Luke goes out of his way to say he was rich. So Luke is telling us, not only was he a tax collector, but he was good at it. He was good at being bad. Yeah, they have reason to know Zacchaeus' name. And to them, Zacchaeus' name was a dirty word. But Jesus knows Zacchaeus' name. Even though he's not from there. He's not from Jericho. But he knows Zacchaeus' name. And in fact, he knows Zacchaeus better than the Jericho, the people from Jericho know Zacchaeus. They think they know Zacchaeus, but Jesus knows him better. Jesus knows Zacchaeus has lost his way. Anybody could see that. But he also knows Zacchaeus is ready to change, that he is changing. Jesus knows how curious Zacchaeus is, curious enough to climb a tree to get a glimpse of who this Jesus was. Jesus knows Zacchaeus is ready. In his heart, something is changing. Jesus knows what the people of Jericho don't, which is that he has the ability within him to be generous to others. To make amends for the wrong that he had done. Yeah. He offers to pay anyone who he's cheated four times as much. 
Yeah, restitution is a biblical concept after all. It's in the Old Testament. That was the law, actually. To return four times what you cheated. Jesus knows Zacchaeus has this in him. And so when the people grumble, it's because they don't know Zacchaeus like Jesus knows Zacchaeus. They're stuck on seeing Zacchaeus in a certain way. God is not stuck on seeing us the way others do. Thanks be to God for that. We have Noah, a murderer. Before him, we have Abraham, a liar. Sarah, a doubter. Jacob, a trickster. Later on, there would be Mary, who would be too young and too insignificant to change the world. But God saw through all of that in them. Saw who they could be. What they would do. Yeah. We are not, none of us, just what others think of us. We have within us a potential that God sees and God knows and God can use if and when we're ready. So yeah, identity is a funny thing. Alan Alda in his podcast, Clear and Vivid, yes, Hawkeye for MASH, he has a podcast if you're not aware, it's worth a listen from time to time. But he had a scientist on his show recently, uh, Gregory Burns, who talked about how biologically we change. And, and the scientist was saying, we're not the same person. We have this idea that we're the same person now that we were before. And that's probably because of the continuity of our story and because of our, maybe our sense of self and soul and spirit. But he's saying that, that, that we're not the same person. We don't look like we did. Maybe we resemble it, but we don't look like we did when we were a child. We think and react differently if we choose. He says we change, and we're free to change. We don't have to be stuck in an identity that we formerly had. Nathan Schramm, who helped found an organization called Musicambia, that is an organization that creates music schools in American prisons. They've founded seven schools for music in prisons in this country. Said, in prison, you're defined by the worst thing you've ever done. This constant reminder can keep people from seeing the best in themselves. One reason we do what we do, or one reason, I'm sorry, that what we do is so effective is because on day one, we define you as a musician. Instead of that old definition, you're now a violinist. Now you're a singer. Or maybe you're just a music student. I love that. Yeah, identity is a funny thing. Jesus knows Zacchaeus' name. But he also knows who he is, who he's been, and who he has the potential to become. And if anybody can bring out our potential, it's the one who made us and gave us that potential in the first place. And friends, I think I think that that is a vision for the church universal. For the church around the world, our calling, our mission is to help restore all things. To help the things, the people around us, and also the institutions, and, and, and the way that things are, to restore them the way God meant for them to be. To, to help them become and live into the potential with which God has given them. And yeah, things are not, we are not, 
always as God intended us to be. We know that. Sin and selfishness and short-sightedness, evil in whatever form or force it may take. Yeah, it got in the way and it gets in the way, and we know that. We're not going to zoom over the fact that Zacchaeus did some pretty harmful things to the people. But that isn't all he was. Our purpose as the church, I believe, is to live into Christ, is to follow Jesus in such a way that we become who God made us each to be. And together, when we work together, when we join together in worship and then in service as well, right, we help to make the world the way it was intended to be. Service is about restoration. It's about making things as they were intended to be. Now, we've talked about God's grace a lot the last couple of months, and, and I hope we never stop talking about it, but we've talked about it a, a, a little bit more even than normal. And we've said that, 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 that God's grace is God's unmerited favor for us, right? That's a, that's a theologian's definition from several hundred years ago. It's God's favor for us. God smiles upon us even though we don't really deserve it, right? But I believe that's part of the purpose, a big part of the purpose of God's grace, is that it gives us a chance for restoration. As one pastor I read this week wrote, God's grace, whether we like it or not, restores us to community together. Yeah, and the people of Jericho, they didn't like the thought of Zacchaeus being restored to them in community, that they had to be friends with this guy again, that Jesus would dine with them. They were aghast. But he turned around and was willing to serve the community by generously giving of his wealth and by making amends for the wrongs he had done. That's a form of service. That's restoration. That's making things as they were meant to be from the beginning. Service is our proper response. It is a continuation of the work of grace that God begins in each of our hearts. It's a response to and a continuation of God's grace in the world. That's why we serve. That's why we work to make other people's lives better. Because we see what things can be like, how the world could be, how people's lives could be, who they can become. We have a vision for that, that God shares. And maybe they themselves don't even realize yet. Service is our part as the church of, of the restoration of making things whole again. And so we're talking about serving today because we're in the second week of our stewardship season. You may recall last week there was a pledge form in your bulletin. It was a little bit different of a pledge form than, than we've had before. It was a We Grow pledge form. We were asking you how you would consider applying your faith in ways that would help you grow in the coming year. Things like reading the Bible regularly, praying regularly, attending Sunday school, worshiping so many times a month, joining a small group that reads the Bible and prays together. Things like that, right? Well, this week it's we serve. How are we going to serve? How are we going to help restore things in our community and beyond? How are we going to help care for and maintain this facility where so many of the ministries of the church take place? Those are all aspects of service, restoration, making things right and whole again. And we ask that you'll, you'll pray about how you would pledge to do that. And yes, on November 13th, you'll have the opportunity to turn this in with all of your other pledge forms. 
We're not going to tally it per se or call you back and say, you checked that you would do this. We're asking this to be a pledge between you and God. And we're giving you the resources for how to follow up on that. If you go to the church's webpage, click on the Connect tab, you'll find links to resources and how you can follow up on your pledge, who you can contact to get involved in the different ministries you checked that you would be a part of or support. So we pray that you will be mindful and prayerful about these forms and how you want to grow and also serve in the coming year. That you'll fill these forms out and bring them back. And yes, there will be extras in the narthex, and yes, we will mail these to your homes as well. But we do hope you'll be prayerful about how we can serve. It's not just about being nice to serve others, you know. It is. We want to be nice. Most of us Christians, we, we go around wanting to do nice things and be nice. And that's true. We should. That's good. But it's part of a bigger work that God is doing in restoring the world. And here's some really good news, because it seems like at times it feels overwhelming that there's so much to do. There's so much restoration that needs to happen. There's so much justice that needs to happen. There's so much reconciliation, peace that needs to be that isn't. And the work can seem overwhelming. Here's some really good news. Through Jesus Christ and through the Holy Spirit, God is renewing all things. We don't always see it. The people of Jericho certainly didn't see it in Zacchaeus. But it was happening. It's happening around us. Just like Zacchaeus, the work is begun on the inside. God is already there, and though we don't see it, and we certainly do see sometimes forces of darkness, whatever form they take, working against us. We know that its days are numbered. Death and decay are defeated forever on the cross. Yeah, those forces will lash out in the meantime, but their days are numbered. Goodness and godliness will prevail. It's already been determined. God is at work in the world restoring all things. It's up to us to see it and participate in it and help bring it about. Help others see the good things that God is already doing in their heart and in their life too so they can join along. Yeah, the work's already being done. Our job is to claim and announce it together. So let's get to it. Amen.